Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome back to another Supreme Commander epic. It's Average Joe's Day today here at Guilecast to celebrate those masters of mediocrity. There's an awful lot of stuff in the news right now after the Queen's death, of course. People over here in the UK endlessly talking about elites and elitism. Well, we're going to talk about the normal people, the little people. So unimportant, I didn't even bother to write their names in the scrolling thing at the bottom. They're not unimportant. Of course they're not. Uh, but the best news is there's no news. There was no point in me writing them in because a 7v7, you barely have time to look at them before we start the game. Enough of that jazz. It's going to be some action on Plateau of Arrakis. Exciting stuff. I'm ready. You guys are ready. And the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how they're going. A two get on. Cheng. ka -ching. All right, we know what we're doing here. We'll call this Team 1 up here at the top, this Team 2 down here at the bottom. It's going to take a while to get through the names, so bear with me. Up here at the top left-hand corner in Ferrari Red, first of all, it's Messiah69, uh, which actually translated, if that's a Turkish name, I looked it up quickly, as Message69. I don't know who he's messaging 69 to, but I don't want to think too much about that. He's going Cybrin and opening a first air. Interesting stuff. Team member number two up here also sharing this little corner plateau with him. It's the Muffin Man. Muffin Man going Aeon in electric blue, going 840 apparently. And again, also going first air. Bit of a theme appearing here for these corner buddies. Moving on to the main back row plateau over the top right side now for Team 1. First of all, it's Emperor 1 in Dijon Yellow, and he is going Cybran opening first land. Team member number 4 to his right in Spetsnaz Green. It is uh, Sol Bacchus, we'll call him Bacchus today, and he's gone Aeon opening first land. Next up to his right in Hallib Orange, Orange, it's... Uh, I can't know who's going to manage today with these names. It's Bazazka. Bazazik. Bazika. Bazazik. We'll call him Buzz. And he's going UEF opening first land. And then there's an air in there and a land in there as well. Second after. So I'm not going to waste too much time on that. The name has destroyed my flow, as you can tell. After him, in the top right-hand corner, it's Ryan T. Another Aeon and another first air. And last but not least for Team 1, just over here. In combat green, it's a Saint Trellfish, uh, tre Trefflet, we'll call him Saint, and he's going Cybrin first line. It's particularly difficult today. If you check in on the little user interface thing in the top right, I'm having a torrid time, but it's not easy. Anyway, it's Saint, there he is, and he's gone Cybrin, combat green opening first land. So that's team one, and it comprises of three Cybrins and three Aeons, I believe, and then there should be one more. Maybe it's, oh, and a UEF, there we go. Buzz is a UEF. Let's check out team two now, starting with a little corner side section over here. In fact, we're going to slow it down because ACUs have already left the building. First of all, we've got AF Felix, we'll call him Felix of the day, he's gone Uriet. UEF in lime green opening first land and his teammate next to him also going UEF in first land this time in cyanide cyan moving to the front over here to get some land factories in place it's Frozo I want to call him Frozone because I'm a big Incredibles fan and let's face it Samuel L is awesome but it's not it's Frozo and there we have it those are the corner players next on to the rear plateau over here for a team two uh, in burgundy red first of all we have Edin Edin Luke We'll call him Edin today. Another UEF, another first land. Yes. Team member number four in mellow yellow. Everybody's left the building now, making his way towards the middle. It's Rockney99. We'll call him Rock today. Going Aeon, and he opened with a land factory. After him, we've got this season's fabulous Vivacious Violet. It's Newells. There he goes. Another Aeon and another land factory. In fact, going land all day by the looks of things. Over to the corner now in lime green. What have we got up here? Up front, it's Noob Dragon going UEF. He went first land, and last but not least, in baby blue over here near Noob Dragon, it's uh, Binyot. There he is, Binyot. And uh, he went, uh, yeah, first land, as we said. Second air there next to the Hydro. So, Racial breakdown on Team 2. It looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 UEF and 2 Aeon. Uh, not a, a single drop of Seraphim love today, but it's fine because they're aliens. 
we're not too upset about that. Game quality at 93%, pretty happy with that. Remember, this is a custom game, no automatic team balancing or anything, but 93%, that's what we've come to know and love as far as balanced games goes. Any ringers in play today? No, not even particularly high rated players across the board this is all very very much middle of the road stuff noob dragon at 1200 down here his comms up over here onto the western plateau now but his base is that quarter base he is the highest rated player in the game at 1200 then we've got some 1100s kicking around both on uh, Team 2, but also predominantly over here on Team 1. We've got Ryan T up there. We've got Buzz just keeping that corner profile. And then the real potential weak links are Felix down here at the bottom right on the corner and Message over here for the top left, both 700 rated players. So there we have it. Four minutes into the game, not too bad for that many introductions. What's been going on? So we've got a couple of ACUs, in fact three ACUs from Team 2 making their way to the Western Plateau. No, scratch that, sorry, it's two apiece because of course we've uh, he actually just moved further forward than I thought he would. Muffin Man moving forward with his comm there and of course message over here getting an upgrade on his commander but then we've also got Binyot and Noob Dragon. Noob Dragon now taking some T1 bomber fire there from message as he attempts to hoover up some of this civilian infrastructure over here for more mass absorbing some fire from some of these tanks on the ground as well which have moved up there for message what's happening at the eastern plateau now we've got Felix and Saint they're actually on opposing teams and they're so busy hoovering up the mass they're not even stopping to shoot at each other but there we go as the last wreck goes there saint's going to open up on felix why not take a chance to put a bit of that damage down as you walk into the next structure to scoopy scoopy massy massy we've got bacchus over here with his com from team one scooping some of that uh, all important reclaim and Frozo, who's rolled right up more or less into the center of that Eastern Plateau, and he's going to get himself a T2 upgrade, 47% done there, and climbing. Uh, so those are both the corner players for Team 2, one in the middle of the plateau, one over here in the little side base. And that one-on-one -on -one between Saint and Felix continues. Remember, of course, at base health, that uh, Cybrin ACU is giving up a few thousand HP. So currently, these two neck and neck, or at least they were until that T1 bomber came in over the top there from Buzz to add a few extra hit points of damage onto Phoenix. They were neck and neck in terms of hit points, but still, it's pretty close. Could probably do with a bit of inbound interceptor action from some teammates to help shoot that puppy down, and indeed he gets it. Frozo not resting on his laurels there, quick to respond, always nice to see. How are those upgrades going over here now? So Message completed his upgrade, T2 operational, you can see he's already got a Cerberus turret down and a shield generator that's going to create a nice little entryway, a little firebase here to stop any an enemy leakage of units in towards the backfield. We've also got a T2 upgrade on the way now for Binyot, 85% done there. Noob Dragon still unupgraded and still on Operation Scoopy Massey. Uh, Muffin over here also getting an upgrade. This time it's a gun upgrade and that's proceeding with real speed and gusto. Had a couple of engineers to assist him with that, although one bites the dust from inbound Aurora Fire here from Nulls who has come up, I think, from the center. Initially, Newells and Rock moved up through to the middle here. You can see with a couple of mass points already under Rock's control. But Newells, I think, just dipped up through this little, uh, what do you call it, pathway section here up onto this plateau, moving into the central basin. And uh, it didn't actually continue to press a potential advantage there against Muffin Man. So Muffin Man was able to grab that upgrade without taking any damage there. So he's got an upgraded gun on that comm. He is Aeon, of course, so he could go double sniper comm upgrade if he can find the room to do it, although it might be a little bit risky, being as Newells has quite so much firepower lying in wait, although Newells now anchored to the spot on an upgrade of his own, another gun upgrade on that Aeon Commander. T2 upgrade for Bacchus, almost complete. And there we go, it ticks over. That's his first upgrade, so we could see a bit of base wars kicking off over here. Frozo, of course, we saw complete 
His upgrade a little while earlier has already thrown down a couple of triads and has a TAC missile launcher which just goes online. Next up will be a bit of flak to help keep it safe. He's already got one unit of that and a TMD. That's a solid little firebase developing there for him and Team 2. After Operation Scoopy in the far right was complete, Saint backed off. Where did he head to? All the way back over there, back to his main base. He got the mass he was looking for, so he's he ceded the territory over there to Felix. Uh, generally, this is what you usually see happen. You usually see, at least at the start of the game, an advantage on the eastern plateau. Go to the corner players and uh, on the, well, the bottom right-hand corner players. And, of course, the western plateau in reverse to the top left. As the game goes on, though, it's a 2v1 situation usually. So that is where things start to change as the time ticks away. Taking a quick look at overall mass totals as we're approaching or just crossing the 9-minute threshold, approaching 10. It is 117k versus 106k in favor of Team 2. How much of that is down to reclaim? An awful lot of it. So they, uh, in terms of generated eco, they are ahead, but not by masses. But look at that, 33k versus 17k. A lot of the mass has already been Scoopy McScoopersund already. Uh, still some rocks to grab in the center, which is where Rock has been hanging out. Is there any com presence for Team 1? Well, we have got Bacchus over here, but he seems more interested in trying to add pressure to the Eastern Plateau for now. This is going to be a tough cookie to crack, although that wouldn't make sense. A tough nut to crack. <laughs> Or a cookie to crumble. I, I mean, you could crack a cookie if you want. I'm not going to stop you. It's totally up to you if you want to do that. Gun upgrade on the way now for Frozo, who already has that T2 engineering suite, of course. That's going to be a pretty chunky little com for 10 minutes into the game. Bacchus now has some shield coverage for his commander and an Operation Oblivion turret. And as a result, he also, in fact, has stealth gen and some good intel. So let me just see what uh, Frozo can see from his point of view. He can see nada, and that's despite the fact that he's got pretty solid radar coverage, thanks to that stealth gen. Commander under Scout attack. plane over the top, though, gets a read, and now he is alerted to the threat. Oh, no! Run away, he says. That is uh, it's always pretty shocking. A little bit of a surprise, a nasty one. Frozo going to back up now in the face of what is an overwhelming Aurora push. He does have some of his own tanks moving in to assist to help counter this threat. And of course, he had, uh, or he had one or two defensive emplacements, but they've been torn apart by fervor fire. Look at that artillery just tearing through these emplacements. Engineers back here throwing up some Tech 1 point defense, and now he's also getting some assistance from Felix coming in from the east. Where is Felix's commander? He's just over here, and he's taken a bit of damage. We saw him exchanging fire, of course, with, was it uh, Saint Early Doors? Yeah, well, he was scooping up that mass over there. Perhaps he's taken some other damage since then. I would have thought he would have repped up more than that by now, although it's only 10 hit points a second, so it's probably got something to do with it. Uh, inbound army motion, though, from Team 2 coming in from the center. Bacchus's shield holding for the moment. More engineers in the scene as well, throwing down more PDs as we speak. I think he might have enough to hold this, although Frozo now getting more point defense online, adding more damage to the pile, and the shield eventually does collapse. More reinforcements coming up the little pathway there. I think that's the end of this little push on the ground, but he still has to worry about Frozo down here and a potential point defense creep. The stealth gen has been destroyed, so doesn't have to keep eyes on anything. Just needs radar coverage, and he's got a T1 radar over here. Is that out of range? Don't know. Oblivion turrets have stopped since because they focused in on Felix that's coming in from the east all by his lonesome. This is a very aggressive little maneuver here. Felix into the red already and I think he might have misjudged this very, very badly indeed. Gets a rank in veterancy at crucial time but Bacchus is there with his comm of course. Boom baby! Wow! That was horribly misjudged but then of course this is an average Joe's Felix who is of course... Just a 700. Can't hold it against him. 
uh, overestimating the success of that recent encounter not appreciating the fact that there was at least three or four oblivion turrets still online the firebase has been completely obliterated so Bacchus now sitting there by himself with his comm and he has got some support coming in from Buzz now moving in from the backfield Buzz who also has access to some pillars now transition to T2 ground tech complete for him but uh, goodness me that was surprising so a power vacuum on this side of things now for team two and you will immediately notice that this is a more manly game than we're used to these days no full share or no uh, full share automatic full share i should say because if you hover over it does actually say full share sharing units after death i'm guessing maybe if they've been deliberately shared before you die you get to keep them maybe answers in the comment section below if you want to tell me the answer to that one, a broadsword in for Noob Dragon though, focusing in on Bacchus, looking for some revenge into the red, 2600 HP, but there's so much T1 anti-air firepower and a nasty little group of T1 interceptors in from Ryan T help maintain the defensive coverage around Bacchus who will survive with a little bit, a little snifter under 3k hit points. If Noob Dragon had been able to amass just a couple more of those broadswords, that would have been lights out for him. But it's still early doors. We are sub-15 minutes here. That was probably his first gunship off the conveyor. I just saw an opening, thought maybe he might get lucky if he tried his hand. But not today, sir. It was not to be. Base wars on the western plateau ensuing. Message still with his comm under shield coverage over here. That is a ED edition 3, ED3 cyber and shield. So there's another upgrade or two left in that. Versus a T2 UEF shield, which is about to capitulate actually to that inbound fire. Radar goes down. They already have the position of those structures, of course. So the triads will continue to fire. Lead triad taking inbound damage down to about 50 percent health and the shield still holding for the time being for message it has a couple of cerberus turrets tickling away but the shield blinks back up and so that little base war will continue look at this stream though moving in from binyot and full of t1 and t2 units just bearing down on Bacchus's position that's an interesting tack to take over here but uh, this is more or less wide open you can see units flooding in from Binyot and indeed from Newell's because uh, it hasn't been locked down Muffin Man has moved back here with his commander he has got double sniper comm and personal shield on board that commander there that's a lot of damage and that's also 8,000 shield hit points on top of his base HP of 11,000 so that's a nasty little weapon right there if you should decide to use it at the moment he hasn't and as a result all of this spam finding its way through into the rear basin for team one something they won't be terribly happy about I'm sure but it looks like they're going to go and try and counter it with some air or are they Ryan T maybe doesn't like the look of the flak in there is it mostly T1 no we do have a sky boxer there T2 mobile UEF flak belonging to Binyot. That's why the Spectres are keeping a distance. Never nice to come up against that unless you've got a decent number of gunships and you can take those out of commission straight away. In fact, look at them. One, two, three, four units over here. So Binyot flooding the area with mobile anti-air. Saint has pushed up down this right-hand side with some engineers and is currently throwing down some Cerberus turrets on this side of the plateau if he can ice out Frozo down here he might be able to start to secure this eastern plateau for team one and give them a major advantage team one as it stands though still comfortably behind right now if that's the right turn of phrase which it really isn't doesn't make much sense by something in the region of about 33k mass in terms of generated eco team two also ahead by a lot that is uh, that is a lot they are a hundred mass per tick up so team two ecoing pretty damn hard channeling lots of resources into upgrading their mexes more so than offensive weaponry 
Team 1 need to get a wriggle on and maybe at least secure some extra territory for their trouble, being as they have weakened Team 2 by taking out Felix in that bottom right-hand corner. But uh, as yet, it all looks pretty static. Expect this, incidentally, guys, to be a more static game than other ones. It's a large map, of course. It's very defensive. We've got a lot of players backing each other up on both sides. And, of course, it's an average Joes. So uh, they will be a little less proficient, a little more timid, a little more inclined to natural turtleage. It's just the way things go. T3 upgrade on the way for Edin. 40% done complete there. I wonder if we'll start to see some Ravager point defense creep inching its way up towards Bacchus. Heavy shield upgrade on the way to Muffman. This is what I'm talking about. It's uh, all very defensive in nature. This is classic kind of uh, average Joes, not just uh, any old average Joes, but sort of mid to low average Joes rating game. Everyone being a little bit cagey, a little bit nervous making sure to secure their defenses, thinking more about that than necessarily rushing in to inflict damage. As the pros know, the best defense is a good offense. What have we got building at the back here? So we have access to T3 tech on the ground for a lot of these players now, I should think. Yeah, there's T T3 Air Factory, of course, for Ryan T, T3 on the ground for Buzz, pretty much across the board, as you would expect, knocking on the door of 20 minutes into this game. Similar picture I would expect to see down here for Team 2. Indeed, Frozo there with a T3 Air. We're not at the stage where everybody's got universal T3 tech for air and ground. Indeed, some of these players still lagging slightly behind. Edin, of course, going for a T3 build capacity upgrade on his comm before T3 land tech itself. Uh, nice little clink hammers here. Loaded up with uh, at least some power generators to assist with rate of fire and uh, lower power consumption needs upon firing. Newer players to the game, if you're interested in what adjacency bonuses do, do check in on the forums. There are lots and lots of threads about that sort of thing. And there are lots of tutorials as well, not by yours truly, but by other players in the FAF community. But usually it's about rate of fire, mass or power reduction on expenditure, that sort of thing. That's generally the gist. Nice play with the broadswords here from Noob Dragon. Helping this little push from Frozo, who's looking like he's making some progress here, even though it's T1 versus T2, and it's not in his favor. Could use that broadsword sticking around to help take down those Cerberus turrets, but apparently it's got work to do elsewhere. Ooh, Ryan T causing all kinds of havoc though with these air superiority fighters. Where is the air force for team two? We've got one or two ASFs belonging to Noob Dragon buzzing around but not enough to properly sort out air escort details for these gunship squadrons. As such he had to pull them out. Mongoose and Pillars now surging forward along with those strikers from Frozo. So surprisingly, I was expecting after the demise of Felix to make T C Team 1 make a push for this Eastern Plateau, but alas, it didn't materialize. Forward momentum, however, from Team 2 continues on the ground just west of the map's center. Lots and lots of Auroras and a few Obsidians belonging to Nulls coming up against some shielded units of Bacchus and uh, Buzz there. Buzz with a few Percy's in the mix. Should be able to black down those T2 tanks in there. Oh, and some T3 gunships this time. Restorers out from Muffin Man. Is he looking up here? Went straight for T3 Air. He's got himself a Quantum Gateway, so he's going to be pumping out support commanders. Always makes sense in a game that looks like it's going to go the distance. RAS upgrade on the way for Rock. Takes him to 138 mass per tick, and he goes straight for a RAS after that. Generated Eco now. Favoring Team 2 by about 125 mass per tick. They are up. What is that? Some 80k 
just under 80k, maybe about 76, 77k, something like that in terms of total mass. Not looking too great. Kill-loss ratios between the two teams. Well, you could hardly fit a piece of paper between them, or at least you could a moment ago when I started mentioning it. It's starting to widen now, but it's 1.17 versus 1.13 in favor of Team 2. Restorers brought in to try and shut down this little obsidian tank push from Newells, who came up here, came up against resistance, but has subsequently moved southeast and attacked what was that little forward base belonging to Bacchus. Where's Bacchus taking his commander these days? Well, he's dropped him right back to base. Didn't want to have anything to do with all of that rubbish. I sympathize. But, of course, a lot of upgrades have been poured into these comms who uh, have now subsequently dropped back. A nuke launcher on the way for Buzz. He's got a little ways to go on that, but that will open up the game somewhat. Make no mistake about that. Even Song mobile missile launchers, the last remaining few units, and we have got a very badly damaged obsidian tank and a, and a flak unit as well, just trundling home from the front. They've seen something, man. The thousand-yard stare on these troops coming home. They have uh, been in the thick of it, but they've really inflicted a lot of damage on this forward base. You can see the destroyed mexes and the wrecked ruins, the storage partially functional around uh, what would have been the mass extractors. Large numbers of broadswords starting to accrue for Noob Dragon. looking in terms of strategic missile defense being as there's a nuke launcher under construction on the other side of things well there's a lot of potential targets that's all I'm gonna say I'm not sure I've seen a single SMD even under construction yet I don't know whether it hasn't uh, it's been a while since they've sent a spy plane over to do any scouting maybe they're not expecting it yet before half an hour you should always expect it in a game with this many people, someone's going to crack on with it. Try and sneak in an early nuke. Why not? T3 upgrade in play. Soon to be for Rock. 85% complete on that. Message still at this forward firebase and investing a lot in it. Check out all of these hives. This is arguably his main base now. This is merely a resourcing option back here. None of these mexes at T3 yet. These core mass extractors. Pretty much everything sitting at T2. My uh, mouse wheel is starting to squeak slightly on my side gamepad. What do you think, guys? Will I ruin it if I squirt WD-40 into it? Probably. <laughs> Not the most technically minded of people. Apologies if there's no cast next week because I've destroyed my equipment. <laughs> Answers in the comment section below. Should I squirt WD-40 into my squeaking mouse wheel? You will decide. I promised to go with the majority. <laughs> Saint over here, continuing to throw down shield coverage around his base. Again, this is what I'm talking about. Pros would not be worrying about shield coverage right now. They would be pouring money into ground-based firepower to send at their opponents. Love it, though. Check this out. Spearheads moving in for Edin alongside Flapjacks and Pillars and Titans and whatnot. A real eclectic mitts of units here amassing for Edin. Looking like they want to take out this position over here, which is a lovely little firebase atop the plateau of the plateau, which is the only real way you can label that, really. It is a plateau upon the plateau. But yeah, one, two, three, four miasmas. Nasty bank of artillery up there. They'd love to deal with that, I'm sure. Mobile missiles should make a mess of that, although, of course, they're Aeon, so these volcanoes, their tactical missile defense absolutely brilliant at screening out missiles the missiles will tend to 
break through, hit the shields, they'll weaken them. But they won't connect with their target. He needs a few more spearheads. Oh, he's got a lot of spearheads. Look at that. I don't know, guys. What do you think? Volcanoes need to be tweaked down? I think they do. So, so perfect. At their defensive capabilities. I'm pretty sure the only reason that Miasma died is because of Titan fire. And it was right on the edge. But Titan's... A little bit further up over here, moving in on the forces of Buzz and this other firebase of Bacchus. Nowhere near enough firepower to break this position, however. Too many Percy's in the mix. Those forces obliterated. In comes a wave of T1 bombers now belonging to Emperor. Emperor, oh god. Emperor getting a teleporter upgrade. Already has the microwave laser on board. So somebody over on Team 2 is for the chop. Where are all the commanders? Noob Dragon, well, he's on the ball. Maybe it's been scouted. Check that out. Lots of Tech 1 point defense going up around him. And we have an SMD in operation not too far away from being loaded. Who was building the nuke launcher? Was it Buzz? It was. Nuke launcher complete. The missile will not be complete before Noob Dragon has his anti-nuke. An anti-nuke that should protect most of the corner settlements. And indeed it does. The right-hand side, if they haven't got their own anti-nuke, will be wide open. But Edin has got one over here. But it's not loaded. And if he doesn't dump a load of support on it it won't be loaded either but of course we're privy to that knowledge team one are not we'll see where he sends that but uh, speaking of where he sends it emperor has now completed the teleporter upgrade he has not initiated yet he has now where's he going we saw point defense going up around noob dragon it's probably not going to be him Binyot might be open. A control K over here for message. How did he die out? No idea what got him at all. Might have been tack missiles from over here. Where is he going? He's going down here. And he's targeting Nulls. Emperor picks him off. So a quick 1-2 ejection. The nuke lands just over to the right and wipes out Edin's base. Edin was not in play though. He was up front taking care of his forward base over here. Ouch. Will Emperor make it out? He's going to make a play for it. We did have a couple of support commanders moving it in to confront him, but nowhere near enough damage. So that was actually a nice little tele snipe there. He picked a good target, took him out. I would love to know what happened to Message over there, whether he just DC'd, but uh, I did see some longer range fire going in that direction. We've got uh, nothing up there. I don't know whether there was some saucy little tap missile snipe or something. Pop it in the comment section, guys, if you want to watch that back. You can always check that out. Big old fat boy in the center, belonging to Binyot. And that should be surely enough to shut this down. You can see these miasmas have already taken a battering. Only two badly damaged artillery emplacements left. There goes the left one. The right one, deep in the red. Shield blinks back on. Fortunately... Fatty is more concerned about the other Fatty on the other side, belonging to Buzz. Shield drops on Buzz's one. Shield is already down, though, on Binyot's. He's on about 7,000 hit points on that experimental. As they trade fire, he repositions, retargets up here, and that is the end of the plateau of the plateau, more or less. Oh, doesn't get a few more shells down, but does take out both shields. That one miasma still alive. Somebody sneeze on it immediately. But it's interesting. Essentially, both plateaus completely devoid of any military the any military presence at all. We've got a firebase on both of these little plateau nodules here and there. 
firebase belonging to Bacchus. Barely left intact. He's got a nice little tack missile battery up here, though. Three silos to the name, and they've been doing some work. Six kills on the top one, seven on the middle one, 14 kills on the bottom. So they've been getting work done. You can see another launch out from him. Where's that going? In towards the fat boy. Fat boy's on the move, however. And of course, that solid Aeon TMD doing its work. Volcanoes countering that without any difficulty. So Muffin Man, of course, will be the recipient of the rest of the core mass over on this side. And the mass points down here in the basin. It's been hard at work, busy grabbing all of that stuff, that land. It hasn't taken him that long. Engineers belonging to Emperor going about their business, hoovering up all of this mass. In terms of reclaim, who has done the best overall? Well, Frozo's pulled in 43k, 49k for Rock. That is pretty huge. Frozo down here, of course. Rock, who's been sitting in the center. But look at this large force rolling in now from Team 2. Very significant pressure being brought to bear. GC out front, leading the charge. Needs to get in and tack, or tractor, sorry, up those Percivals. GC, of course, has had its tractor beam adjusted recently, which is why it might seem like a higher frequency than you're used to. You can see all of those assault bots being hoovered up. Really is the best experimental to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with hordes of Percy's. Eventually it does succumb to all of that inbound fire. The fat boy whose shield has capitulated has dropped back to another group of T2 shield gens over here belonging to Bacchus. And that has muted this attack somewhat. But another GC in from the northwest here from Muffin Man. It's going to join the party and it's got the jump on a bunch of mobile missile launchers over here. Flapjacks and spearheads. T3 status. Not going to do you any favors in that encounter. Oh, a load of demolishers there. Clumped up asking for one strap bomb right to the middle of the pack. Large air engagement. Kicking off. It's essentially Noob Dragon versus Ryan T. Oh, sorry, Noob Dragon and Frozo versus Ryan T. And that's going to go better for Team 2, you would have thought. They've got the numbers the easily. Ryan T is going to make it out with... A couple of handfuls of fighters from that engagement. He's pumping out more all the time in pretty solid order. Another nuke out from Buzz. That nuke launcher already with 53 kills to its name after its strike on Edin's main base. It's now going after the middle. Edin's forward base. They still don't have anti-nuke in play. Is Edin out of the blast radius? Yes, he is. But that will tear a ruddy great hole in those central defences of Team 2. Rocknery and Edin spent a lot of time, made a lot of investment on that front line. And now it is irradiated mess. Muffin Man's GC makes it under friendly shield coverage. But there's still that fat boy roaming backwards and forwards. Back and forth for Binyot lobbing its ordnance. <laughs> Just the tack missile battery was left there. Nice dodge with the fatty. Just enough shields to blink on and keep the rain off that Colossus's back.
head in, moving back up to rebuild in the irradiated crater that was his forward base. Vignot and Buzz going to trade fire with their fatties. A lot of engineers trying to hoover up the mass there. 8,000 mass to be had. But uh, none of them are going to make it, I don't think. Inbound fat boy fire. Crushing them like the worms they are. That's how squaddies view civvies deep down. It's all yes ma'am, no ma'am. That uh, functions. Or sir. <laughs> that makes it sound like they go around calling me mum. Only on Fridays when I wear my skirt. Titans from Binyot. They were looking like they were going to make a play for something, but instead they come back to join the uh, the fat boy. I like what I'm seeing here, though, from Binyot. He's not throwing this experimental away. He's keeping it back. He's keeping it clumped up with the shield coverage. What I would like to see is a complement of flak alongside this. It was a critical error on the other Arrakis game that we played yesterday on the main... Or, sorry, on the Patreon channel. This is the main channel. Not enough flak. Always got to build the flak. But look out! Strat Bomber attack inbound from Emperor going straight after Edin. Looking for his second snipe of the game. Bosh! The final bomber gets him. It looked like he might have survived there for a minute. The uh, It's not like Team 2 were resting on their laurels with the air coverage there. Frozo and Noob Dragon on the ball but uh, wasn't enough to protect their teammate those pesky cyber and stealth bombers they just weren't alerted to the threat with enough time to try and keep those out of his line of sight another load of strats up here being stacked up now for Ryan T and uh, there's a couple of Novaks buzzing around, so we've been focusing on what's going on elsewhere and haven't been looking at the potential base wars that's developing. It's getting to that phase of the game. So those Novaks belong to Noob Dragon down here, and he's not messing around. He's got two online already, and he's queued up two more. The third one is almost done, and they are building those quick. He has a lot of mass. My word. Would you look at that. So he's been stocking up. He could really pump these out. And yes, they're not instantly amazing units when they're brought into the fray. They're not uh, automatically the sort of unit that you would... Uh, think are, are going to win you the game but over time you start getting enough of them together you get to a critical mass of ionized satellite fire you start tearing through those shields and into the main base it is no joke and the speed that he's building those things once he's got those drones in play Commander look at that under attack. He's minus 158, but he's got some 41,000 mass in the tank. And that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a real problem. They're going to have to try and deal with that. This is, of course, full share. If they can find a way to take Noob Dragon out with another snipe, that will eliminate the Novak's problem. But it's easier said than done. There's a lot of real estate between them and him. He's way back here. He is at the front of the bases. But check out all of these overlapping shield gens that are covering him. He's got a stealth gen up front as well. That's the view from Team 1. They have a scrying tool, so they're getting a good old solid look at what's going on. They're about to see the fourth Novak satellite complete and think, oh, lordy, lordy, we need to do something about that. 
And we've also got base-to-base -base artillery fire landing on Buzz's base, who's already lost one or two PGENs. Oof, and that was a duke that he was working on too. The shield coverage around Buzz's base is not as strong as some of the other places. He's going to get out a nuke, another one out of that nuke launcher. But this is not good for Team 1, not good in the slightest. Where's that nuke going though? Is it going after the fat boys? It looks like it is, and it might be the perfectly placed nuke to take them both out. Bosh! We'll wait for the flash to dissipate. See if he's managed to score a double kill on those experimentals. Nukes, of course, it's not an automatic kill on a lot of experimentals, but the fat boys are pretty weak. Uh, I'm not seeing anything moving. That was a nice, nice kill. But we now have four operational Novaks, and he's going for number five. They're going to have to do something about this. You can see spy planes making a pass now as they try and get a read, perhaps on where the comm is. There he is. Did they recognize it in time? No one pinged it, but that doesn't mean they didn't see it. Oh, and look, another wave of strat bombers inbound this time from Emperor. We did have a load of strats. We do have them. They're circling up there for Ryan, but he's not joining in in this raid. Stealth has been activated. They are coming in after the commander. Bombs away. A lot of those bombs impacting on the shield. Oof, what's left? He's got the extender, shield extender, on the comm itself. That is still operational. If there's any bombs left, they're going to come in from the south. Some of those are already going to get blocked by the base shields that are still operational. Oh my word. Oh. 800 hit points. Are there any bombers left? No. Noob Dragon survives. All of his Novak satellites survive. Support commanders and engineers hurriedly work on rebuilding the shields around that comm. The comm shifts under double shield coverage once again. He's back up to 2,000 hit points now, but wow. That was pretty terrifying. A GC from Muffin Man advances. Meanwhile, a few GCs, in fact, from Team 1 just storming down the middle. We've got two more from Bacchus and one from Muffin Man assaulting the front lines of Rock. Where is Rocknery? He is back at the main base down here. In come the bombers once again, going after Noob Dragon from Ryan T. He's moved further in the base. Will they regret not having come in together if they had joined or come in just after? They would have taken Noob Dragon out, but now they've come in one at a time. I think the window of opportunity has closed. Not good, although Muffin Man at the main base now with a GC. Support commanders being drafted in to help with base defense. There's a very big battery of Ravagers over here, though, which will inflict massive damage on the chassis of that Colossus. You can see the HP just plummet into the red now. Sub 20,000 hit points, sub 10,000 gone. Wow, it wasn't even close. It looked like he had a lot of hit points left, enough to maybe at least affect some serious damage in here, but he could barely even get up the ramp. Noob Dragon under sustained assault here from Team 1. The rest of the GCs died just past the front line over here. Made it into their friendly, their main base territory. But didn't make it to the main bases. And now they are left to watch these Novaks go to work. This is a serious existential crisis now for Team 1. They had some real positive damage inflicted on their opponents, but not enough. It's not critical. They've not taken out the one player and the one weapon they needed to, and that's these satellites which are now tearing things up. We've also, of course, got some emissary fire, which I believe is coming in from Rockmary. Got one down here. Soon there's going to be a second one. It's been a major investment in this standoff tactics. 
Ryan coming in with another attack. Mostly spy planes and one bomber. Interesting. Or two bombers. They are not going to make it. There's a lot of Sams in here now. Noob Dragon with some 13... Sorry, that's not Sams. That's Flak. Commander Sams Commander. over here with some 20 Sams in total in this kind of line. And a wave of... TMD over there from Rockenry. He is floating a full bar of 500 mass. He needs to get on and start spending it. One, two, three, four. Now got five Novak centers. Might as well start another one. Or at least start chucking out more fighters. Focusing on getting more support commanders in for the moment. But that's not going to spend your mass, I should think. No, look at it. He's still floating but he's overflowing so it won't be being wasted unless his teammates aren't doing anything with it either but look at emperor's base it's just been toasted emperor now on the move Bacchus must just be like why are you coming into my base why <laughs> you brought them to me not cool bro but he's they're actually thinking you know what rather than Move in this direction. Maybe I'm going to head south. I thought for a minute, actually, he was going to go over to Muffin Man's base. But he seems to be bringing them back instead. Maybe he wants to take out this fat boy that's out on his own. Indeed, there it is. So much damage on that shield. The shield's about to ping off. There it goes. Oof. Next volley will get him, although he might also make it to shield coverage before they fire. No, he's not going to make it before they fire. Can they finish him off before he gets there, though? No. Oh, God, that was close. <laughs> Sorry. I'm making some very strange noises today. But that was, yeah, that was almost very clutch. But uh, in the end, wasn't at all. <laughs> now those satellites are moving onwards up towards the top left. And Muffin Man, which is where I thought I... Th said I thought they were going to go just a moment ago. Muffin Man completes a czar. Now, what's he going to do with that? Is that the first one? No, there's another one hanging about over here. Team 1 have got to do something. They are getting picked apart slowly by these super weapons. They're not threatening to break through on the ground. They're just kind of... It, it's almost like they're stockpiling, but they're not doing it quickly enough, enough generally, or indeed with anything important. And Saint now taking fire at Com, even with Cloak absorbing some damage. I don't know if it was actually... It probably wasn't going after the Com at all, but the Com was standing next to sensitive structures in the main base, which is now getting bombarded. Those Novak satellites have reached the target and they've taken out the anti-nuke. So this is wide open now for nuclear attack. Do we have any nuke launchers? I would imagine someone would have uh, been working on one. Bit of an oversight if not. I, I'm betting that I'm not seeing it and they've got one somewhere. Just purely because it's something that they homed in on. I'm guessing they've got one. I can't see it, but it's not currently loaded. Otherwise, they would have fired. Muffin Man, vulnerable outside shield coverage right now. Will the next volley be on him? Oof. Shield blinks back on. So a single volley from these five Novak centers breaching shield and almost taking out a quantum reactor as well. That is really difficult to repel. Engineers doing a damn good job though, building more shields as they go. And this is the problem. Team 1 very much locked up right now. Massive air encounter in the bottom right. Ryan T and Saint versus Frozo. Where's the Air Force for Team 2 gone? Oh my god, look at all those cougars. That's a lot of 
T3 mobile anti-air rolling out. So at some time we've missed in the recent past. Team 2 have lost a significant air battle, I think. Check this out. Another massive wave of strats inbound from Emperor going after Frozo. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my word. Another comm surviving a strat bomb attack, at least for the time being. They might have a second bombing run attempt. Some still coming from off map after that first attack. Shields holding, though. They hurriedly rebuild another one. Meanwhile, back up here, Muffin Man has evac the base. He's out of shield coverage right now. Dangerous place to be. Novak's lock onto him. He goes whoop, 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 whoop. Just does his little Zoidberg impression. And heads back for shield coverage. <laughs> There's nowhere he can go. He's not going to make it anywhere else. Gets back under shield coverage. Where's the nuke? They just need a nuke up here. They must have one. Strategic launch detected. It's like I knew. Look at that. There we go. Binyot over here at the far left. Just hadn't built one yet. And there it is. It's going up here. Muffin Man moving south. If he carries on that trajectory with his commander... But he's not. He, he won't want to, of course, because the satellites will hoover him up the second he steps out of shield coverage. But if he goes too far south, will it miss him? It does miss him, but the shield is gone. Muffin Man now wide open for those Novak satellites, and there's not a thing he can do about it. Team 2 up some 500,000 mass now. And there goes Muffin Man. Kaflui. Frozo healing up nicely. Emperor on the teleport. Having just attacked Frozo. I'm guessing it's another snipe attempt and he's going to sit plonk his comm right down on top of him. The attack ping goes down. Frozo's just recognized the danger. He emerges from gate travel. Bosh! Kills the comm. Will he make it back out alive? I can't see a goddamn thing. <laughs> no, he went down in that as well. But uh, it's one for one. And uh, his base was more or less shredded by the Novak's attack anyway. So I think they'll be happy with that trade. But they've got to find a way to take out Noob Dragon because those satellites are just going to pound them into dust. Emissary Fire, meanwhile, still raining down on top of Ryan T and Buzz's base. Oh, Saint now starting a teleporter. Has he got the laser yet? No, not yet. Ryan T moving his air force. All right, he's got a czar and he's got a couple of strats to his name. What, if anything, can he do? Lining up for attack against Rock, potentially. Rock over here. At the western edge of his base. He might just settle for taking out some of the engineers, I'm sure they'd love to take him, him out if they could. That would alleviate lots of the defences, the defensive measures over here in the basin and present new avenues of attack. But there's not really much on the ground for Team 1 to attack with. Their investiture has been largely air-based. Zar taking huge amounts of fire as it drifts over the target. Hasn't yet fired its primary weapon. Looks like it's going for the comm. There's Rockin. It's got about 15,000 HP left. It is now over the target. It opens up with its beam weapon. It drifts over to the west. I'm not sure where it's going or why. It realizes, I must have been a misclick or something, it comes back towards the comm. It can still do huge amounts of full damage, remember. 
if it gets shot down, but it's over the target. Rockin might not make it out. Bosh! There he goes. A nuke out from where? A nuke out from the southwest going after Bacchus. Any anti-nuke to speak of, or has it been Novaxed? Our survey says it's been Novaxed. Bang! He's gone. Another member down for Team 1. And I don't see any way out of this now for Team 1. They've got a huge... They have actually got a decent ground force of kind of T3 and T2 pushing out down the eastern approaches now. Buzz up front spamming out T1 factories just trying to send that's going to be the plan just to try and overwhelm with low order spam but uh, will there be anything left of them by the time those forces of Saint get there I might have said Saint before actually up there that was of course not Saint that was Bacchus apologies if I got that wrong but the Teleport completed. The upgrade for Saint. He's now going for laser. We saw a while ago that uh, Noob Dragon was preparing with point defense. He had a bank of point T1 point defense up front where his comm was stationed. He's now got a huge bank of T2. Generally, the best thing to do is go for T1 around the commander, but... Is that counterfire... There's some artillery fire coming the other way. Yes, there is. They've got at least one artillery battery. There it is. Duke at the back. But Buzz is com now being targeted by the Novaks. He moves further out away from Ryan's base. St. Fisher... Is he actually... So he's just repping his comm up now because, of course, he's taken damage and I'm guessing he doesn't want to go in there with a mere 5k hit points. But goodness me, that's taking him a long time. Could it be that he hasn't got much eco to speak of? No, not really. He's putting out 340 mass per tick. Team 1, some 300 mass behind now on generated eco. But look at that. They are... 650k down over the course of the whole game and it's not going to get any better either look at these huge discs that have dropped down here all the mass that team 2 can hoover back up and that force that did look somewhat intimidating moving down the eastern approaches is just getting torn apart by retreating fat boys who are laying down the artillery curtain for them to walk into That's taking a long time. It really does take a long time to rep up an ACU. Never understood quite why that was such a thing. Buzz's Duke seems to have drawn the attention of Noob Dragon's satellite network. Would love to get that out of commission. It's probably a sensible move. It's the only thing that's really threatening the main base right now. But even that, I mean, it has, it, he's landed a couple of shells. We've got some damage satellite centers down here. And there we have it right in the middle of the triad battery. There is the exit mark for Saint, who gets very confused upon landing an insta dice. <laughs> oh, it was like because of where he exited, he got caught up somehow on the triads and so couldn't do anything but yeah it wasn't just the the triads that got him just a huge bank of ravages back here opened up on him from Binyot's front line and uh yeah that was the end of him so now it's a 2v2 but of course it is far from even as another couple of novak satellites satellites move up to join the pile up here will that be the straw that breaks the camel's back as far as his shield coverage is concerned I think quite possibly it might be. Buzz has heroically 
kept his base intact with all of these engineers supporting shield gens and building new ones. They're alternating now though, going after Ryan's base. I can't, there's so much flare coming off that shield. Can't see what they're going after. It looks like they might be going after the strategic missile defense. They got it. The shields blinked off momentarily and then collapsed. So is that the... And uh, there's the nuke. Is that the only strategic missile defense? It might well be Ryan T. Standing almost exactly on the spot where the nuke's about to go. If he doesn't get a move on, he's not going to get out of range. Of course, he doesn't know that. Nuke missile inbound. And this will... Definitely, definitely represent the end of the game, I think. Mass capitulation as that connects and takes out Ryan T along with all of his base structures. Leaving Buzz all by his lonesome. And there really is no way out of this. My team freaking rocks, says Rocknery. I mean, it was good standoff play. They played nicely. They got ahead in eco, and they spent it on the right right weapons and turtled well. More oh, Novak satellites underway. Look at them! There's a whole bank of six up here, which I didn't even look at. And did they bag him, or was it Control K? I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. One hour, one and a half minutes. A solid little average Joe's epic there. A little change of pace. Base wars, if you will. A bit more static than perhaps you're used to, but it's always good to see different types of games. I think so anyway. If you'd like to see more games on Arrakis, however, there's another one that's gone up this week, as I said, on the Patreon channel. So do check that out, guys. And please, please, please do keep replays coming in. I've been a little bit strapped of late. So if you're sitting on a great game, or a game that you think has potential, don't feel too shy to send it my way uh, through all of the usual places. Either catch me on Faf when I'm on, or send it uh, via um, uh, forum mail, or to the Facebook page, any of those things. If you're a member of Patreon, you check my Patreon messages. Chuck me one through there, I check those regularly. But yes, uh, and uh, do please uh, consider the Patreon. As I said, guys, if you're interested in supporting me, because it is the best way to do so. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. As always, more to come from me in the future. But until next time, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.